Hi, my name is Evan Davis. I'm going to tell you about modeling the whole world, integrated assessment with GCAM. Lots of people want to predict the future. We want to know what might happen if we do something. For example, will I feel sick if I eat another big bowl of ice cream? Will my paper airplane fly farther or straighter if I change the design? What will happen if I add more baking soda to this vinegar? Will I finally beat the other team in the video game if my team can run, dodge, and pass just a little faster? Governments and businesses have similar questions about the effects of their actions. They can guess the answers or they can test some ideas themselves. They can ask other people called experts what they think, or they can use computer models. Computer models can help us to predict the future. What is a computer model? Well, one definition is that it's a simplified representation or description of a system, especially one designed to help us with calculations and predictions. Some examples you might have heard of include things like flight simulators or weather forecasts, or even computer games like SimCity, but there are lots of others too. In fact, we use models now in almost every area of government, society, the economy, business, and research. Some models are very simple, but others are extremely complicated. Why do we use computers? Well, they're really good at math. They can solve equations very fast. In fact, the fastest computers can do 200 quadrillion calculations per second. One model that's used to simulate the whole world is called GCAM. This is the model my research team is using at the University of Alberta. It's developed by a research group in the United States at the Joint Global Change Research Institute. It looks a bit like this, so it has human systems and natural earth systems, and they all interact. GCAM is a bit like a computer game. We can change our guesses or our assumptions, and then we can see what happens when we run the model. GCAM stands for the Global Change Analysis Model. Have you ever thought about all the ways humans change the environment around us? For example, we build buildings, roads, power plants and power lines, cities and dams. We use energy, land and water. We change forests and grasslands into fields to grow food. And then people in every country are doing this all at the same time. And taken together, all these changes change the world around us. We even change the climate. What are the effects of these changes now and 100 years into the future? Well, GCAM helps us to find out. GCAM can simulate all of these different changes and their effects. GCAM has a bunch of different regions. So it has Canada, the United States, China, India, Europe, along with 27 other countries and regions. GCAM includes electric power plants and renewable resources. It includes fossil fuels, so oil, coal, natural gas. It also includes demands for energy from buildings and industry. It has an agricultural component, so it uh, simulates the growth and consumption of all the foods that we and our animals eat. It simulates water resources, the amount of water in river basins and how we use it. It also simulates climate and emissions, so the releases of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and, and methane, for example, uh, along with changes in temperature and hydrology. And then it simulates in five-year time steps from 2015 all the way to 2100. Here are some examples of how we've used the GCAM model recently. So one thing we were interested in was how water moves around the world with the food trade. And here you can see some results from the model for 2050 and for 2100. In the darker green, you can see where more water is exported in the, in the form of food crops to different countries around the world. And if you look carefully, you'll see that our own Saskatchewan River Basin is one of the big exporters. How much is it sending? Well, it sends in the form of food as much as 50 billion cubic meters per year. What does this mean? Well, if you think about Abraham Lake, it's the largest human-made lake in Alberta. 
It's the reservoir behind the Bighorn Dam, and it's about 1.3 billion cubic meters, or 1.3 cubic kilometers. 50 cubic kilometers is about 38 Abraham Lakes, and that's what we're sending in the form of food every year to different countries. Now, the amount of water that we use as a society will change over time. This is another study that we recently completed with GCAN. What these uh, results here show is that the choices Canada and other countries make about energy, the economy, climate change, the food we eat, and the technologies we use will affect the amount of water we use into the future as well. So you can see there are big differences between this set of assumptions and this set of assumptions about what our future looks like. To wrap up then, we can predict the future, at least to some degree, with computer models. Models like GCAM help us to weigh our options. They help us to see local and global effects of our energy, water, land use, and climate policy choices now and all the way into our grandchildren's lifetimes. They also show us that ultimately our choices do matter. We can make a difference. So you can think about which future you want and how you'll get there. Thanks for your attention. Thank you so much for watching Future Energy Systems video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our exciting content. Check out the links below to our website and learning page where you can find activities, learning extension, and more. You can also sign up on the website for notifications for future videos and interactive opportunities. There's so much to learn as we explore our energy future.